perfect. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a great day so far and welcome to today's video, which is going to be my September roundup, where I share all of my faves, fails and updates for everything that I tried new to me in the month of September. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so let's talk first about Galan's Tobacco Honey. I have had so many questions about my thoughts on this fragrance, how I like it, what I think, and I know it seems like I take a really long time to tell you about perfumes, but please bear with me, please try and be as patient as you can because it does take me a while to be ready to give my full thoughts on a fragrance. I need to know how it's performing different environments, how long it's wearing. I need to know whether other people can smell it on me. And I also like to go back and forth with it a lot until I'm ready to share because it's very important. They're very expensive. I don't want to mislead anybody. So I'll always take a long time to kind of let you know my thoughts on a fragrance. Give me a couple of weeks, I beg you. So first of all, this bottle is divine. If you're not aware, you actually get to personalize Galan's fragrance bottles. So I had my name engraved here and I chose all of the gold details, but you can have all different colors and textures, pick whatever you want, which I absolutely love. It just makes the experience so luxurious and let's face it fun so this is like an amber woody fragrance it's right up my street for years now i've been on the hunt for a fragrance that does everything that tom ford's tobacco vanille does in the middle the top and the middle of that fragrance is gorgeous but it does not perform well at all on me it's very short wearing it doesn't have really any sillage nobody else can smell it on me i can't smell it on myself give it an hour and also i find the dry down to just be quite like it loses all the interesting bit about it in the top and the middle in the dry down it becomes quite a sort of standard vanilla and yeah so it just doesn't quite do it for me but there's bits about it that i really love and finally found the solution the answer to our tobacco honey prayers are here this starts off with such an incredibly natural and realistic honey kick in the top whenever i've sprayed this and, and i put this on in the mornings my daughter immediately is like coming over to me and attaching like a limpet she's like oh I love it, mummy. I love it. You smell of honey. And she, you know, being a nine-year-old, she's not got the most sophisticated developed nose when it comes to notes and fragrances, but she was immediately like, oh, you smell of honey. She knew exactly what it was. It's incredibly realistic and beautiful. And then the tobacco starts coming in and the vanilla and it stays absolutely this beautiful balance between those two notes, two of my favorite all-time notes, done so incredibly well the performance is exceptional you just get wafts like i can smell it on myself with just two sprays on the neck i can smell this fragrance on myself the entire day just wafts of honey and wafts of tobacco and they kind of never overwhelm each other they're just always both present and in the real dry down you get a little touch of oud coming through and the vanilla in the middle slightly peeks through a little but this is a really very straightforward tobacco honey fragrance with little hints of something else but very very smooth and beautiful and realistic it's incredible i absolutely love it i know that other people can smell it because i've got many compliments which is not that it's unusual but with this type of fragrance it can be quite divisive i think this is such a crowd pleaser i've had so many people like gasp when they smell me but it's also not a really obnoxious level of sillage it's probably you know arm's length and you're going to get wafts of it but the longevity is insane like unmatched this made it through a shower with two sprays that i i applied when i first got this fragrance i literally just went to see how it did first with a couple of sprays made it through a shower i had this dress on yesterday when i went out for lunch and I slept in it, woke up this morning and put my dress on to just quickly go on the school run. And I literally smelled like I had just freshly applied the perfume. Its performance is incredible. I absolutely love it. I think it's probably my favorite ever tobacco honey fragrance. And even fragrances that might challenge this as far as being, you know, above it, like Initio Side Effect, the performance just smashes all of those out of the park. It's got such incredible performance and the beauty of this scent. It's so gorgeous. 
absolutely going to be like my signature for winter. If you like Killian's Angel's Share, it's nowhere near as sweet as that, but it does have sweetness because it has honey in it as you know one of the keynotes, also vanilla. So it has sweetness, but it's not cloying, it's not gourmand, it's not sickly, like I know Angel's Share can be for a lot of people. Absolutely one of the best fragrances, if not the best of the year. There are roadworks going on in the little lane behind my home right now. It's very, very loud in this room. I'm very hopeful it's not as loud on camera. I'm really hoping that my microphone is doing its excellent work at blocking the horror noise that is going on here. But I'm so sorry if you can hear it, that's what it is. I don't know if it sounds like someone's blow drying their hair or what it sounds like to you, but it sounds like hell in here, okay? So. I'm so sorry about it, but I don't know how long it's gonna go on. So we're powering through, we're powering through. Next up, let's talk about this MAC Studio Radiance Serum Powered Foundation. This is another one I've had a lot of questions about. I've sent this in PR and I have worn it a few times. I've posted it on my Instagram a few times. So if you want to see it on, there's lots of photos of me wearing this on my Instagram and I've had lots of questions. So I have given this a full going over, okay? I've worn this on numerous occasions, long days. I've worn it on the day that we go for swimming lessons, which is always a bit trying for foundation because it's a very, very hot and humid environment for a long time. And I feel like ultimately I'm a little underwhelmed by the foundation. There is nothing majorly wrong with it. It's got a really nice medium like buildable to like the edges of full coverage finish it's got a nice luminous finish that isn't super like dewy or greasy it wears really solidly I find it quite flattering I think I'm slightly put off or thrown by the shades so I was sent three shades NC 27, 30 and 35, which are typically, that's like literally my winter, summer and in between shade usually. I do think the shades in this foundation are slightly different to the other foundations that I've tried from MAC and therefore I had a little more trouble with the shades. I have had several people tell me that their shade is different in this foundation as well. You might need to go a bit lighter. So I've tried all three shades and it's just the undertone is an issue with me as it usually is with MAC foundations. I've never had like a perfect undertone match. Everything just always looks too warm on me. So that was, that definitely throws me off and you know, affects how I feel about the foundation. If it's just not looking quite right because something is off with the shade, it's just, ne you're never going to love it. So I think there's that. I think the other thing is that while everything is good, nothing is wow. You know, I put my Prada foundation on this morning and I was just like, oh, I, it's just, it, it really wows me. It gives me the wow factor. So does, you know, the Hourglass that I love. Of course, the Tom Ford shade and Illuminate. Lots of those foundations that I put it on and I just love it. You know, as soon as the foundation's on, I absolutely love it. This one, I'm just constantly like, hmm. And there's nothing that I could tell you it does this. It's not got enough coverage. It's got too much coverage. It's too matte. It's too drying. There's no bad negative point that I could really put my finger on. There's just no, nothing like special or wow about it. So yeah, it's okay, it's fine. It's a nice solid foundation. I feel like Max shade range just always is a little tricky for me. And maybe a perfect shade would have been the bit that I needed to love it but it's just okay for me. Next up, Urban Decay sent me across their Hydromaniac blushes this month. I've only tried one shade so far. These are quite new to me. The shade I tried is Wrecked and I really liked it. These are liquid blushes and usually like my nightmare, you know, it's got a nozzle, mm, immediately red flags. I thought these were going to be really sticky, but they're really not. And I think when I swatched these, they alarmed me. So this is the shade Wrecked and it looked like the least frightening when I swatched them. Hence why this was the one that I decided to give a try to first. Now what I did is exactly that. I nozzled a little bit out and then I used my BK Beauty brush to really like work it into the my hand and work it into the brush and then tapped on my cheeks and it looked so pretty. Really juicy skin, very sheer when applied in the way that I did. So it, it felt easy to, you know, build 
up and comfortable and not be scared like something disastrous was going to happen and it just looked really fresh healthy and natural on the skin which I really liked not sticky I didn't wear particularly well I'll say that it's not really the sort of formula that is going to be like long wearing at all but really pretty fresh healthy and also quite a nice base if you want to have a bit of a glowier blush you could have set it with powder and then it would have worn a lot better but this shade particularly was very pretty natural juicy fresh skin that I found really easy to use actually so fair play because typically those products are a disaster for me by the way I turned my lights on in the background finally I've had these literally for like these side lights that I have to light my back drop they have different colors that you can use I've never used any of the different colors before but I've been very inspired by Tanya and also the Welsh twins who have like more color in their background and I was like I need to do some colour in my background so I stole their ideas so thank you so much to Tanya and Robert and James who inspired me to have a little bit of colour what do you guys think is it pretty is it distracting let me know what you think okay next up let's talk about Lisa Eldridge's liners these were sent to me I was so excited to receive PR from Lisa Eldridge because you guys know one of my all-time favourite brands and I was beside myself when this package turned up because it meant I got to swatch all of the colors and really tell you guys which are my favorites, which are worth picking up, which we love. So these are my three favorites. The formula of these eyeliners, wait, no, wait, I have to tell you about the packaging first. These are pencils, okay? I never in my life thought I'd be the type of person who could possibly get excited or impressed by eyeliner pencil packaging you think it can't be done but this is the sexiest packaging of an eyeliner I've ever known in my life I don't think you're going to see on camera like just how glorious this is because it just looks like a pencil I get it you think I've lost my mind but it's the weightiness of these and like this it's just so solid and so I can't I, the quality is insane okay that's what I'm saying you won't be able to tell I don't think through the camera how glorious they are but when they arrived I was like I was wowed by a pencil <laughs> I didn't see that coming the next thing that happened is I wanted to swatch all of these for my Instagram post I wanted to swatch all the shades and I snapped one and I'll tell you why because these are the softest eyeliners I've ever tried by like some way and I've tried some soft eyeliners before you know the Charlotte Tilbury ones are very nice smooth soft creamy the Natasha Denona are very soft these are like a whole we need a new word for soft they're so much softer even than those formulas that I applied too much pressure you literally barely need to touch I don't know how to show you like how lightly I'm touching but I'm, I'm barely touching to get the line that was the um gold shade which I'm so sorry it's currently sold out I hope it's coming back because it is one of the prettiest that is the only sort of real like shimmery shade the gold the green actually has like some pearl in there but here's the thing when, when these are like sharp like sharpened and you have quite a long point I barely touched my skin and I'm not applying any pressure at all it's not like I'm applying light pressure I'm not applying any pressure they are so soft so yes you want to be gentle don't apply any pressure but the positive of that I mean obviously that's that's all a positive if you're not super ridiculously cack handed like me and heavy handed you'll be fine but the plus of them that super crazy soft formula is these are so easy to use like I literally tight lined my upper lash line today and then I used it in the waterline on my lower lash line and then I just took a brush and slightly smoked out that lower lash line and it's perfect the other day I used the brown to do a wing and I I didn't really do a wing I literally tight lined and then I took a little brush and just dragged it into a flick I got the most perfect wing because they're so pliable that you can literally drag them apply and then either smudge out or dr or drag it if you want to do a wing and they just are so soft and smooth and pliable until they set down that they are incredibly versatile so these are my three favorite shades that gorgeous gold the night forest green and then the coffee shade the brown which is the one that I used 
on my eyes today, just like the perfect colors. So once you've first applied them, you've got a bit of time, you can see there that you can like sort of smudge and smoke them out. So they don't like set down too quickly so that you haven't got time to do what you want with them. You've got a bit of time. Once they are like set, these, are set okay they aren't going anywhere i did my swatches and then i was doing something else and obviously it took a time a little time to take all the photos i came in to rub them off my arm they were still there the next day i'd scrubbed my arm i'd had a shower you could still faintly see the lines so these are long wearing okay they are long wearing as long as you want like just really not that easy to get off okay so i was very impressed i just love how smooth they are and soft that they are because they just make them so easy to use you don't need any pressure it means that you can glide across your eyes without having to you know hold your skin if you have some eyes that like move about and get in the way when you're trying to do eyeliner you don't have to hold it because there's just they require no tension they're very very easy and kind on more mature eyes very very impressive while we're on the subject of lisa eldridge let's talk about the long Con by the Louvre collection. I have reviewed this. If you want to see it all in action, then please check out the video because this is stunning. Okay, this palette I think is again one of my favorite makeup items of the year so far. I feel like everyone waited till September to like drop these absolute bangers for us. September has been quite the makeup month, hasn't it? This was such a dream to play with. I loved it so much. I went into, you know, the video trying this for the first time, really not knowing how I was going to make an eye look out of these four sh shadows and really not knowing what was going to happen, what it was going to turn out like. And I absolutely loved it. The shadows in here feel like nothing I've felt before. They feel so silky, I think is the word I'm looking for. And the green is so clever. It's got like that like black base. And if I'm looking at it from this angle, it looks like a silvered blue somehow. And yet there it's a green. What's going on? We don't know. Stunning shadows. And the highlighter in here is one of the prettiest highlighters I've used in recent months. Just so glossy, healthy, glowy. This gave me, as I said in my review, absolute hankerings for Lisa Eldridge powder highlighters because this in all different shades, yes please, I need it immediately. This is an amazing palette. I think it's sold out in the UK, but I think it was still available in the US when I checked this morning. It, who knows, any minute it's selling out. I don't know if it will be back. Lots of people asking me if it's coming to retailers. Will it be restocked? I don't know. I know it's it's limited edition. I wouldn't hang about if you want it because I'm not sure. I've not heard anything that it's going to be coming back or made permanent, but so fun. A very special little piece of makeup and just a delight to use. The lipsticks, as I said in my review, I think the packaging is also super beautiful and the shades were lovely. I love this packaging. These are refillable. So there are only like four shades and I wasn't super wowed by any of the lip, well, either of the lipstick shades that I chose. There weren't any that sort of really screamed to me color wise. So I don't think you especially need any of them. I don't think any of them are especially like unique as far as shades, but if you really like the packaging, which I do, these are refillable and you can buy whichever shade you like in the refill and you can use it with the compact or the compact, the component, if you really love these, which I do. I think the packaging in this collection is stunning. Next up, let's talk about these What's Up Beauty highlighters. So I was sent these in PR two shades. My favorite is Sunset Safari. Can you see? that gorgeous embossing. It's so pretty, absolutely gorgeous. And the front as well of that packaging is delightful. I just mix, there are two slightly different shades in here. There's sort of, sort of lighter champagne and a pink. This is the deeper of the two highlighters and it is just beautiful. Again, it's that type of highlight that I really like, that when you blend it in, it's still highlighty and you still get to glow, but it's very smooth. It blends into the skin really nicely. It's not detectable as like highlight. It's, there is no sort of chunky glitter. It's literally 
sheen and it melts beautifully into my skin tone. This shade is absolutely perfect for me and I thought these were so pretty. The image, the packaging, but the highlighter itself is gorgeous. Look at that sheen. It's somewhat made up for the loss of the Chanel ones or the lack of the Chanel ones. I don't know, by the way, people keep asking me. I don't know if they're coming. I hope that they are. I'm praying, but who knows at this point. Another single highlighter that came out this month was this new RMS Luminizer. This is Prosecco Fizz, only available in one shade. These ridiculously beautiful products from RMS, they always get me. I mean, the thing about this highlighter is it's so versatile like apply it like that and you think wow metallic but again just like the what's up beauty highlighter this can be so subtle like almost too subtle what i like about it is when i initially apply it, it's too subtle for me which is very rare thing to find but i like to actually build it up and i'd much rather do that than have like you know like the hourglass metallic strobe lighting powders where it's like oh my days you have to apply it with like the wing of a fairy and then buff it into the skin this it's like you can go really heavy and actually really build it up till you get to the place you want it to and i'd much rather do things that way it's less frightening and less mistakes can be made you know it's a perfect shade it doesn't have a huge amount of base so although there is only one shade it will work beautifully on a lot of skin tones and I've seen it used on a lot of skin tones beautifully because it is more sheer doesn't sit on top of the skin it's very very smooth if you're wanting a comparison between these two this is much more highlighty the RMS is much more subtle which is much more my sort of you know vibe when it comes to highlights so smooth even smoother than the what's up beauty and just very understated subtle luminosity i think this is called like a luminizer yes hydra dew luminizer and it just is so pretty rms are really like coming into their own this year i feel like it was their year where they've really put themselves on the map and their products now i know if they release a product i'm excited for it because i've loved everything so far so much and i'm really excited for what's coming next this is such a pretty highlighter i'd love more shades because it's glorious. Next up, YSL sent me a load of their lipsticks. I really didn't know that I was on their PR list. I don't know if I am, but they sent me some of their lipsticks and I was not going to complain about it. I haven't tried this formula, but you guys will know I love YSL lipstick formulas. They're candy glazes. Oh, delightful. Um, you know, even their tints. I've got a, almost, I feel like all of their lipstick formulas and I love them all but I've never tried this one and these are the Rouge Pour Couture lipsticks which apparently have been reformulated but I have never tried these so it's about flipping time I did for a start this packaging is insane it's so heavy and luxurious it's really got a lot of weight to it and I love that like 3d logo on there so I've put some of these shades that they sent me aside for my giveaway that I'm plotting as we speak but the two that I picked out for myself are NM I mean what kind of shade name is that I don't know NM and N5 is that the right way around yes NM and N5 which is the pinkier of the two these are like a medium opacity sort of satin finish lipstick really nice and comfortable and creamy but not thick or heavy on the lips really flattering really really like these I know that I was I knew that I was going to because I I always feel like YSL's lip formulas are very very strong but apparently these are reformulated and they're delightful so thank you YSL. Next up a product that again I've been getting a lot of requests for an update on and it's the House Labs concealer and I definitely have some more developed feelings about it. I think this is my new favourite concealer okay just gonna throw that out there. I'm not a hundred percent committed to that decision yet I'm still kind of going back and forth between this one and the Huda and the Pat McGrath and the Dior and even the Gucci I mean this one is quite different to the Gucci so you can't really compare the two it just depends what you want the Gucci has much less coverage it's smoother and much more natural this is like a full shebang full coverage so much coverage that you can't remember who you are anymore 
kind of concealer. So those two, it's like, if you want natural medium coverage, obviously choose the Gucci. If you want just the fullest of coverage, then you can't go wrong with the house labs. I think it's so good. So much coverage, but without it being heavy or drying under the eyes. There's like sometimes, some days, I get a teensy bit of creasing, but most days not. I've tried this, I've used this non-stop since I bought it, since I reviewed it. I really haven't put another concealer on my eyes because I've just kept coming back to it and wanting to try it more. Some days I get the smallest, tiniest amount of creasing that you really can't see unless you sort of look and go like this, like I love to in my reviews to really see what's going on in there. Other days there's no creasing to be found and I think it just depends how much I've used. If I use just, you know, a, a teensy bit, blend it out with a brush and then go over it with a sponge, I won't get any creasing. If I've applied a bit more and used only a brush, I might get a teensy, ow, I might get a teensy bit of creasing. So I think that's what's happening. It's such a good concealer. It feels comfortable. It's got the most coverage of any concealer I've ever tried. It's the only concealer that has ever fully, fully, fully covered everything I want it to underneath my eyes. And it's got a nice sort of soft focus finish to it. It's very flattering and smooth. I love it. I've now got a much better shade, which is 21 light medium neutral which I like and I'm a big fan what can I say I'm loving it I love it it might be my new holy grail watch this space it takes me a long time to commit to that okay I'm not just holy grailing stuff willy-nilly about the place all right and finally let's chat about the Charlotte Tilbury holiday collection this collection only came into my life last week but I've basically only used this eyeshadow palette since it arrived because I just really wanted to try every shade in there. I wanted to see what different looks I could get so I could really give you all of the tea in this video. And I love this palette. I love the packaging. Of course, it's stunning. Charlotte Tilbury packaging is always beautiful. It always just appeals to me. I love it. I love the style of it. Everything's very shiny and pretty and pink and sparkly and it's just a delight. So in my review, I didn't use the pinks and I had a few, a good few requests to post a look or do a look using the pinks so people could really decide whether they were the palette was for them or not once they'd seen the pinks on the eye. So I posted these pictures on my Instagram with the look that I did using the pink. So for that look, I used the pink matte and then these two shades, this one in the inner corner and then a couple of the mattes. And then I think a little bit of one of the sort of neutral mattes as well. I love that look was so flipping pretty, so pretty. If I'm gonna wear pink eyeshadow, that's the pink eyeshadow I want to wear. It's so beautiful. And then today and yesterday as well, I used basically these two, the light and medium mattes at the top, the neutral mattes, and then just this shade all over the lid with a little bit of the topper in the inner corner. And it just gives you the perfect sort of soft glam neutral look as well. I feel like it's very, very versatile. This shade surprised the life out of me. I didn't think I was gonna use it at all because it's like a silver, a really opaque, creamy, metallic silver and I, I'm not going to use that that's going to be the shade that I don't use but I used it in my review and it just finished the look so beautifully and then in the pink look that I posted that I showed earlier as well I put a bit of that shade in the inner corner and again it just took the look from being like pretty to wow it's just such a clever little shade that one that I didn't think I would use I'm delighted with this palette I absolutely love it I'll get a lot of use out of it and I'm just really happy that I've got something more than a four pound from Charlotte Tilbury because we've all been like desperately longing for like her bigger palettes to come back which obviously this isn't quite as big as her was it 12 pan the the thin ones <sighs> I miss those, but this is nine and I'll take nine over four any day. The formulas are fantastic. The mattes are amazing. Some of the best mattes I've ever tried. And except for the topper shade, I get zero fallout from any of these shadows. I don't know how. Dry brushes, finger, built up, I get no fallout from any shade in there other than the topper, which does give me a few little sprinkles on the cheeks. I love it. Nothing has changed. My love has only grown.
But these little cheek duos, it's not that I don't like them, I do like them. It, what the problem is for me is that neither of these quite works for my skin tone. And I really want to love them because I love Charlotte Tilbury cheek products, particularly highlighters, they're always gorgeous. Blushes as well, I should love these. And I really want to, but I just, they just don't work for me. This one, I did use it in my review. And as you guys saw, it was, I mean, that's literally like one little sweat. It's so pigmented and rich, which is perfect because it is intended for a deeper skin tone than mine. So that is going to be gorgeous on you. And I love the color of this blush. It's so pretty, but I just can't use it with any ease and security. I've been trying to use it since my review and I actually used a different brush the other day and oh my god it was it just was so much pigmentation and I took me so long to sort of calm it down and get it to a level where I didn't look bonkers and I just thought I don't know if I can handle this stress. I have to use this highlight a little strategically because the highlighter is also a little on the deep and warm side for my skin tone but I do love the shades and the finishes and I think if you have a tanned and deeper skin tone, it will be stunning on you. Just, it's very hard work for me to make it work for my skin tone. And then this is just not my colors. I just don't really ever wear this sort of pink of a blush. And the highlight is a little too light for me. So then it leaves a bit of a cast on my skin tone. It looks a little gray. I really wish there had been a shade in between these two. We really needed three. This is, you know, going to be lovely on a fairer skin tone. The other shade is going to be gorgeous on tanned and deeper skin tones, but I feel like for someone around my skin tone, if you don't like pink, I mean, this is the thing. Someone commented, please let me know if it was you, because you nailed it. You put the hammer on the nail. You hit it right on the head. And that is that Charlotte Tilbury, often when they have two colors like with blush products the lightest shade is always pink and the deeper shade is always like a variation of orange peach coppery tones please please swap them around one time I beg you if the lighter palette had been a sort of peachier tone I'd have been obsessed with it and whoever the commenter was on my I think it was on my Charlotte Tilbury review of this collection who was saying like every time she goes to buy the deeper of something it's these colors so you know deeper skin tones have these colors from charlotte tilbury lighter skin tones have these colors from charlotte tilbury please swap them around for the next collection the lighter option not be pink the deeper option make it pink because there there aren't any really rich deeper pink products like this from Charlotte Tilbury. Please swap the colour stories around. So I like the products. I think they work. And I think if you just have different preferences to me, you'll probably love one or the other of them. And I think if you have a deeper skin tone, you're in luck because that shade is absolutely beautiful. The blush is going to be stunning on you. So yeah, I think they're nice products. They just don't fully tickle my pickle specifically, but I really wish they did because they have a lot going for them. I like the packaging. Again, I like the size. I like that we've got a blush and a highlight, but it's just the combination is just wasn't quite right. I want, I wish we'd had three or 10. I would have preferred 10 if we're choosing numbers. Okay, so there you have it. That is my September roundup. It felt very short, was it? I doubt it. I always say that every month, but buckle up because I believe next month's roundup is going to be absolutely packed full of probably horrifying number of holiday releases. So <laughs> we're not out of the woods yet, people. But please let me know what your favourite product that you tried in the month of September was. Did you try any of these products? What were your thoughts? Please let us know in the comment section down below. But I hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And I'd love to see you in the next one. Otherwise, take care for now. Bye-bye-bye-bye-bye.